My name is Kevin Esfeldt. I'm leader of the Sculpting Evolution Group and an assistant professor here at the MIT Media Lab. The Sculpting Evolution Group develops technologies designed to solve ecological problems. One of the ways is by altering the genetics of wild populations. I played a major role in developing a technology called a gene drive, which is a way of spreading an alteration made in one organism through an entire population. And I firmly believe that because this is a technology that allows a single researcher working in the laboratory to build something that could affect many, many people outside the laboratory, we need to ensure that people have a voice in decisions that might affect them. And in this case, simply running that first experiment could affect them. And that means that we need to ensure that this technology is open from the very earliest stages before any experiments are performed in the lab. Popular trust in science and scientists depends on our ability to act responsibly. I'm not particularly concerned by the ecological risks posed by gene drive systems. The social risk though, I view as being extreme. When we first realized we could use a genome editing tool called CRISPR, which is a molecular scalpel that lets us cut and therefore edit any DNA sequence in virtually any organism, to build a gene drive system capable of spreading those changes, we decided to go public with it first before running any experiments in order to set an example for the future. The question is what should you do and how should we decide as a community together what the shared environment should look like? That's a hard question. It involves governance. And I would say there's a strong argument that New England town halls in small communities are in fact the place where democracy works best. So is there a local ecological problem that could be solved through biotech that people might be interested in supporting despite widespread skepticism over GM foods? And of course there is. Lyme disease. It happens of course when an infected tick bites a person. And while it's usually not fatal, it can develop into serious lifelong complications that really can ruin people's lives. Most ticks get infected when they bite a mouse. So we wondered, could we alter the mice such that they could no longer be a host for Lyme disease? Because no infected mice, no infected ticks, no infected kids. Nantucket and Martha's Vineyard are two islands where Lyme is a tremendous problem, and yet communities are very well educated and consequently are capable of engaging in dialogue about whether we should do this at all. There's also frankly something to be said about getting the most powerful members of society to volunteer to try a new technology in their own homes before we try to test it on other people. We approached these communities before we did anything at all and so far the response has been overwhelmingly positive. But if you uh... Decrease the what deer you population. have said here is whether that there's much know known about I differential reproductive success. Ticks are born if you approach a community and propose something that offers a benefit, will be done in a non-profit way, and you are open about the risks and about potential safeguards and about different ways of testing them, and invite them to guide the project from the outset, you get a very, very different response from what we've seen if you go about science the traditional closed door way. And that makes me really optimistic for our future open, community-responsive science. It's the path forwards.